Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. Um, I have, I have to talk about this. <laughs> I'm going to try to be a little discreet, but uh, not too discreet, not overly discreet, let's put it that way. I will say that I've been in a spiritual battle, for those who are aware of it. God bless you and those who are not, don't worry about it. But I've been in a spiritual battle and the Lord actually prepared me for it. And how he prepared me for this battle that I'm in was that he brought me to this verse uh, in Revelation. In fact, actually, last week, the first video I did today, uh, I said that um, I, I heard the word, I mean, I began to cry out to the Lord, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? The, the, word, the Psalms 23 came to my mind. I want to bring that up. I know it doesn't sound like it's related, but I'm going to, it actually is, to what I'm saying. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find it now. Excuse me. He brought to my mind Psalms 23 while I was going through this, and I didn't understand why he brought this to my mind, but listen to what he says here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is a prophetic, a prophetic psalm. Most people quote this as a comfort, you know, it is a comfort. It's a comfort to their soul when they're in distress, to remember the goodness of the Lord. But this is a prophetic psalm in regards to the wedding supper of the Lamb. This is a prophetic uh, psalm in regards to what spiritual Israel is going through and what physical Israel is going through. We are going through the valley of the shadow of death. We are in the valley of the shadow of death. We're on the verge of rapture. We're on the verge of resurrection. And after we go through this valley, he's going to prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies and anoint our heads with oil and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to go to Revelation. This is so exciting. Revelation chapter 3. This is the Church of Philadelphia. And I'm going to read that scripture for you. Starting at verse 7. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of David David and hath opened David by the way is the person who wrote the Psalm 23 who has the key of David and no man shutteth uh, he that openeth openeth and he and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man open. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. What was interesting about this little part here where it talks about you, thou hast a little strength. The Lord showed me something just actually this today, this morning, while I was contemplating making this video, was that he has purposely kept the bride, the church of Philadelphia weak in order to, for the church to learn how to depend on God's strength. Those who seek power will not be attracted to the church of Philadelphia because it doesn't have the same spiritual power of the early church of Ephesus, uh, the start of the church in the Gentile uh, world, it has a little strength. Jesus has purposely removed this, um, the spiritual power or the manifestations in the physical realm in order to keep those who are seeking power away. <laughs> Does that make sense? He's made her unattractive to power-hungry people. He's made her unattractive to those who... Uh, 
find the gospel foolish. He's made her unattractive. He's made her powerless so that the bride learns to depend on him. The church of Philadelphia is the church that is removed from the hour of tribulation, which shall come upon the whole world. Also, the, the suffering church uh, is also removed. The weeping church, as I call her, the weeping bride. The church of Philadelphia is removed because of her dependency on Christ, or because of her weak state. She has learned to uh, depend on the strength of Christ. And it's, that's what makes her unattractive to the world, is her dependency on the Lord. This is very exciting. So anyway, it says, um, this is the part I really want to get to. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. What does that remind you of? The 23rd Psalm. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Uh, uh, thou, thou preparest the table for me in the presence of my enemies. Jesus is not just talking about those Jewish people in the physical Israel who pretend to be Jews, um, the Pharisees and the, uh, the people who were trying to control the physical Israel and still are trying to control physical Israel. Um, she has not yet recognized the physical Israel. The true Jews have not yet recognized the synagogue of Satan in their own camp. But the spiritual Israel is also going through this process of learning to recognize the enemy in the camp. Those who say they are Christian and are not, but of the synagogue of Satan. Uh, I want to read a verse just for a moment. I want to go to, oh, wait, 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 let, uh, let me just finish that, the point, and then I'll go to this other verse. Um, Behold, I will, I will make them come and worship before thy feet and know that I have loved thee. The church of Philadelphia is the raptured church. This is the church that is removed from the hour of tribulation. Those who uh, mock and scoff the true church, the bride, who try to control it, who are actually uh, uh, tools of, the, of Satan, of the enemy, who are going to come and worship at the, the feet of the bride because she will be at the, the wedding table. She will be at the banquet and they will be down on the earth mourning the fact that they were participants in their own destruction, that they were, they had the opportunity to follow the truth and did not and were deceived. They were deceived and deceivers. Um, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write on him, on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Again, Psalm 23, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The, prophet, the prophetic nature of Psalm 23 corresponds with the prophetic nature, blatant prophetic nature of the Philadelphia church. This is very exciting. Now, I also wanted to read one other thing, those talking about the synagogue of Satan. I want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 15. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Chapter 15, excuse me. I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting at verse 47. This is not my use, the program I normally use, so the writing is very, very small. So I'm having a little bit of difficulty actually reading it. My eyes are not that great. Um, starting at verse 47. Oh, that's not the right one. I got the wrong verse. Oh, 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 okay. I'm sorry. It's 2 Corinthians. 
I'm going to stumble around here, but I'm not going to remake this video. I'm going to just leave it as it is and go from there. Okay, uh, for 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, starting at verse 12. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off, a, cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that there and they glory, that they may be found even as we. For such are false prophets, deceitful, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no more, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I wanted to read that just to say that physical Israel is having difficulty in its walk because it has a hard time recognizing the enemy, uh, the enemies within and the enemies without. That's what physical Israel is struggling with right now. Um, they, they are so been so rejected and so lonely and so, um, cast off that they're willing to accept any friendship even friendships that are so blatantly um, detrimental to their well-being that they haven't yet learned to recognize the enemy they are beginning to they're starting to open their eyes to see that you can't compromise with the devil. You can't uh, say it's okay. Oh, we will take you as your friend, um, but just don't, you know, take a, the, the enemy keeps coming in and taking a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. And Israel has put up with it because of their rejection, because of their loneliness, because of their uh, not understanding that God is on their side. Spiritual Israel, the bride, the church, is also going through the same process. The spiritual Israel, the church, has to overcome the enemy before the physical Israel can overcome. This is what the Bible says, that the spiritual man must overcome before the physical man can be transformed. And this is what we are going through. As a spiritual Israel, we must be the victors over Satan. We must learn to recognize the enemy, the enemy in the camp, those people who say they are Christian. How can you tell the difference between an enemy and a friend? By their fruits. Their fruits. This is how you know. You recognize them by what they say, how they act, and what the result of what they do. Okay? Um, this situation that I'm in right now, is teaching me. The Lord was preparing me for this, and I didn't realize at the time I was going through the preparation, I thought, saying to the Lord, why am I going through this? Crying out to them, why, why, Lord, why am I going through this? And the Lord is showing me, has now showed me why, to prepare me to learn to recognize the enemy. Just as the bride, the true bride, those who are actual Christians and not those who say they are Christians but are actually of the synagogue of Satan to learn how to overcome the enemy with the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Satan, you remember, Satan uses lies and deceptions. Deceptions are half-truths. Okay? They, he, Satan pr has transformed himself and into an angel of life, light, and so have his ministers. They put on the clothing, they're wolves in sheep's clothing, and they put on the clothing of a Christian, or even say they are Christian, but the reality is they are not because their fruits expose them for what they are, what they, their true intentions are. In these last days, Satan is trying very hard to divide Israel, the physical Israel. There is a reason for that, and there is a reason why Christ will not allow it. He will not allow the land to be divided. And one thing that's going to happen, and I know this, is that 
Israel will not lose the land she already has. In fact, she will gain more because Christ has already won the battle. Every battle that the church has had to face, she gains more ground. She gains more ground. She gains more ground. Every battle, the bride, the church has has faced and will face and is continuing to face, she gains more ground. Why? Because the truth is in her. The truth sets her free. And she gains more ground. Every war, every battle, every challenge, she gains more ground. The same thing with Israel. Israel will not lose any ground. Israel will continue to grow and grow and grow until she receives every piece of land the Lord promised her. You see, Abraham has not yet received the fullness of the promise that the Lord gave him. He promised him a land that went all the way to the Euphrates River, river to the Nile River, down into Arabia. And Satan is desperate to divide the land of Israel. But Israel will not be divided. The Lord, just the same as the church, the true church, is unified in spirit and heart and mind and theology. And Satan has been trying to divide and conquer it through lies and deceptions. She is gaining ground. She will not be divided because Christ is not divided. One faith, one Lord, one baptism. When she is in her fullness and complete, she will be overcome and be the victor in this battle. She has to learn to stand on the word of God on the solid rock. And Israel, physical Israel, is doing the same thing. She is learning to stand on the rock. She will learn to, and she will recognize him eventually. She, has, she hasn't yet recognized her Messiah, but she will. This is exciting, people. We are on the verge. Just keep your eyes up, peeled to the sky, Jesus is coming soon. We are being transformed into his image. We're going through that door that's changing us from corruptible to incorruptible. Learn to recognize the enemy as the Church of Philadelphia has had to do. As it says in Psalms 23, the presence of mine enemies. I mean, being able to recognize who that enemy is. Church of Philadelphia, she knows her enemy. She is victorious because she has learned to to uh, understand who is against her and who is for her she will be raptured because of her trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ do so if you haven't done it yet give your hearts to Jesus do what he commands you to do be baptized in the water for the remission of your sins because it's a commandment of Jesus Christ to be recognized as part of his body. Please do it now. There isn't much time. I can't say I know when the rapture is. I don't. But it ain't long. Okay? God bless you all. And I will talk to you later.